in my experience as a preacher, so many times, I've had individuals say to me, just preach Christ. What does that mean? While I did not, and I do not, question the sincerity of those who make that kind of a statement, I do say that we must ask the question, what does the Bible say? To preach Christ is a scriptural phrase. Acts 8 verse 5, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and he preached unto them Christ. Acts 8 35, Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. So preaching Christ, preaching Jesus is a scriptural phrase. However, we must understand that you can take a scriptural phrase and misapply that phrase. You can take a phrase that's found right in the Bible and misuse it. Use it in a way that it was never intended to be used. You can misapply any phrase in the Bible and make it to say something that the Lord never intended for it to say. We noted last Sunday evening that when people say, just preach Christ, what they often mean is, just talk about Jesus and don't say anything about baptism. Acts 8, 5. Philip went down to the city of Samaria, preached unto them Christ. Acts 8, 12. When they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they were baptized. Both men and women, Acts 8 verse 12. What was the result of preaching Christ? Acts 8 12. Acts 8 5, he preached Christ. Acts 8 12, what's the result of preaching Christ? They were baptized. Look in Acts 8 35. Acts chapter 8 verse number 35. Philip opened his mouth. And he began at the same Scripture. And he preached unto him Jesus. As they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went both down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch. You're just going to sprinkle somebody? You're just going to pour a little water on their head? You don't, there's no need to go down in the water. But this says... Clearly, they both went down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now look at verse 35. What did he preach? He opened his mouth, began at the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. What's involved in preaching Jesus? The Bible says as a result of Philip preaching Jesus, the eunuch was baptized. Now how can preaching Jesus, how does that include instruction about baptism? Why would anyone make that assertion? 
because the Bible says he merely preached Jesus unto him, and as a result of that, he asked to be baptized and was baptized, therefore, to preach Jesus to a lost individual. To fully preach Jesus includes preaching baptism. Preaching Jesus included instruction concerning immersion. Otherwise, how did the eunuch say, here's water, what's preventing me from being baptized? If all he preached to him was Jesus, then why did the eunuch ask this question? The answer is clear. Why the eunuch asked this question? Because preaching Jesus fully to a lost person in the apostolic method includes preaching New Testament baptism. To fully preach Jesus, we must give baptism the prominence that it is given in the New Testament Scriptures. How can you preach about Jesus and being saved when Acts 2.47 explains when one is baptized for the remission of sins, Acts 2.38, they are added by the Lord to His church. That's when they are saved. How can you preach Jesus and not include baptism when 1 Peter 3.21 says baptism saves us? Notice Acts 8.12. I've had people say to me, just preach Jesus. And what they meant was, we want you to talk about Jesus and nice sweet things that doesn't offend anybody, but don't say anything about the church. Just talk about Jesus. Don't say anything about the church. Just talk about Jesus. That's just preaching Jesus, they say. Well, look at Acts 8, 5. Philip preached Christ. Acts 8, 12, part of preaching in Christ included talking about Christ church. When they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God. I thought he just preached Christ in Acts 8, verse 5. He did. But preaching Christ includes Acts 8, 12. When they believe Philip, preaching the things concerning the name of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God, they were baptized both men and women. Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. God has made Christ to be head over all things to the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. The body is the church. Ephesians 5, 23. The husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Ephesians 5, 23. Christ is the head. Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. The church is the body. You take the head away from the body and what have you got left? Just talk about Jesus. Don't mention His church. If you're going to tell people how to be saved through the blood of Jesus, Acts 2.47, after they had been baptized, the Lord said they were praising God and the Lord added to the church Daily such as should be saved. Yet we're not supposed to mention the church? How are you going to tell someone about being saved if you don't mention the church? When God adds them to Christ's church. How are you going to preach Christ and not mention the church? The church is the bride of Christ. When we understand what the church really is, then we will understand you cannot preach Christ and not talk about His church. The church is His bride, Ephesians chapter 5. Hebrews 12, 23. What is the church? It is the church of the firstborn. 
What is the church? 1 Timothy 3.15 If I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. That's what the church is. And Jesus said, you'll know the truth, the truth will make you free, John 8.32. How are we going to preach Christ without talking about the pillar and ground of the truth, 1 Timothy 3.15? How are you going to preach Christ and not talk about the family of God? 1 Timothy 3.15, the church is the family of God. How are you going to preach Jesus and not talk about God's family when a person is saved, they're added to that family, but you can't talk about it because it offends somebody? How are you going to preach Christ and not preach the church when saved people are added to the church? Acts 2.47. How could you do that? Exodus 29.45. Exodus 29.45. Here's a beautiful passage of Scripture where God talked to His people in the Old Testament and what He say to the Israelite people. I will dwell in Israel and I will be their God. Exodus 29 verse 45. Now think about that. Of all the families of the earth, of all the little groups, And human beings tend to get into little groups. You know about that, don't you? Of all the groups in the world, what did it say in Exodus 29, 45? I'm going to dwell among one group of people, God said. Israel. And I will be their God. Now think about that. One group of people over all the face of the earth, that's where God was dwelling. What an honor, what a privilege, what a responsibility. And did you realize this is foreshadowing the church? The dwelling of God among the Israelite people in the Old Testament was looking forward when God would dwell among His people in the church. Look at Ephesians again, chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. He gave Christ to be head over all things to the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. Where is Christ? In the church. In the church. Just talk to me about Jesus. I don't want to hear about the church. My friend, you have a mutilated gospel. And it can save no one. You have a mutilated gospel with that attitude. 1 Corinthians 3, verse number 16, Paul talked to the church at Corinth. He said, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Think about that. He's talking to the church of the Lord in the city of Corinth, and he says, you are the temple of Almighty God. That word temple comes from a word that means dwelling place. He dwelt with Israel in the Old Testament. Where does he dwell in the New Testament? In the church. In the church. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 21. Paul said to the church in Ephesus, Paul said to the body of Christ in Ephesus, he said, you are the temple of God. He said, you are the holy temple of God. He's talking to the church in Ephesians 2, verse 21, and he says, we're the temple of God. That means dwelling place. That's where God dwells. He's not dwelling in physical Israel anymore. They don't even have a priesthood. They can't even offer a sacrifice. They don't even have a temple. That's the center of the Jewish worship. They don't even have it. The Muslims have it. 
where the great temple of God once stood, now the Muslim rock of the dome stands. They don't even have a temple. They don't even have a priesthood. God doesn't dwell with them any longer. They're not His chosen people. <clears throat> the church is God's chosen people. And God doesn't dwell in Israel any longer. Ephesians 2.21, the church is God's temple. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 22. Paul said clearly to the church, You are the habitation of God through the Spirit. The word habitation means dwelling place. The church is the dwelling place of God? And you're going to just preach Christ and not mention His church? Galatians 3.27, we are baptized into Christ. And you're going to preach Christ without preaching baptism? But 1 Corinthians 12.13 says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body? Ephesians 1, 22 and 23 says the body's the church. We are baptized into Christ. Galatians 3, 27. We are also baptized into His body. His body is the church. If you can't preach Christ without preaching baptism, and you can't, then you can't preach Christ without preaching His church. Because the same process that puts you into Christ, Galatians 3.27, also puts you into His church, 1 Corinthians 12.13. Preacher, I've had brethren tell me this. And you, do, you, know, you just kind of have to hold your breath when, when they say this. Of course, I have to be careful about doing that now, so I don't hold my breath too much anymore. But used to when they'd say that, boy, I, it'd just be quiet for a long time because I'd think, where have you been all these years in the church? Have you learned nothing? Are you that ignorant? Of course you can't say that. Oh, no. Yeah, they can tell you that. You know, y'all can tell me anything, and I just have to live with it, but I have to be real careful what I say to y'all. So somebody says to me in the church, Preacher, just preach Christ. Leave the other churches alone. I've never had a denominational person tell me that. Never. But I've had a lot of brethren tell me that who knew about that much of the Bible. Or they would make such a ludicrous, ridiculous statement. Just preach Christ and leave the other churches alone. What do they mean by that? I'll tell you exactly what they mean. They mean, preacher, what we want you to do is just preach sweet little sermons about Jesus and the cross, and we don't want you to mention any false doctrine in the community or that's in the world. We don't want any of that. That's why I went and got a master's degree. Because I knew, I, I, I'm not going to do that. I don't care who they are, what kind of power they think they have. I'm not going to do that. And I thought the whole church was going to go that way. And I thought, well, I, I'm not, I'm not going to give in to that. I'm going to have to find another way to make a living. Because I'm not giving in to that stuff. I'm not going to quit preaching something because it hurts somebody's feelings. I'll, just ha I'll have to get me an education where I can fall back on something else. Well, thanks be to God, the whole church didn't go that way. Many of them did. But think about this. Just preach Christ. Leave the other churches alone. Don't talk about false doctrine. Just think about that. That sounds real sweet and real mushy and real kind and compassionate. It's not. It's not kind. It's not compassionate. It's not loving. It's not grace. It's the opposite of all these things. How can you preach Christ and not mention false doctrine when Jesus said in Matthew 7, 15, Beware of false prophets 
who come to you in sheep's clothing, and inwardly they are ravening wolves. How can you be faithful to Christ and not preach anything about false doctrine in the church, in the community, in the world, when Jesus made that statement? How can you not preach about false doctrine? When Jesus said to His closest followers in Matthew 16, verse 12, Beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the, and the Sadducees. That's the two leading religious groups of the day. He called them by name. Can you, can you imagine Jesus saying, Oh, well, now I can't, I can't call out any... I can't call out any names of other religious groups. That's just, that's just going to hurt so many feelings and that's going to turn so many people away. Then I can't do any good. Can you imagine Jesus thinking in that kind of way? Well, that's not thinking to begin with. But He told His closest followers, you beware of the doctrine of the two leading religious groups of your day. That's Matthew 16, verse 12 in your Bible. So how can a preacher be faithful to the Word of God? To the Word of Jesus Christ? And never mention false doctrine? How can he be faithful to Christ? 1 John 4 verse 1 Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Everybody that says they're a preacher, everybody that says they're religious, everybody that says they're a priest or a rabbi or whatever title they put behind their name, reverend or whatever, don't just believe it. Do not believe every spirit. Try the spirits. That means test them to see whether they are of God because many false prophets have gone out in the world. Faithful, inspired people in New Testament times warn the church over and over and over and over about false doctrine. And yet I hear things like, oh, we're going to hear that again? Hadn't we already heard that? Why, 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 why do you keep talking about why do you keep talking about false doctrine? Do we have a problem here? Why, why do you keep talking about that? Have you not read your New Testament or you just not believe it? Over and over and over, inspired people warn the church about false doctrine. And yet today the idea is, well, just, te just talk about Jesus and nice, sweet things and, and just leave everybody alone. Don't, just don't mention that. When I first started to hear that from leaders in the church, you know the first question I asked myself? I had two little boys. The first question I asked, what, what, what are the... What are these boys going to eat tomorrow? Because I ain't going with this stuff. And I finally had to understand if I'm going to believe in God, He's going to take care of us. And if I'm not going to preach His Word, I need to do something else. And if I hadn't got the guts to do it because somebody can't handle it, then I need, just, I need to get into another profession. If we're not going to do what the early apostles did and warn the church today of the false doctrine that's all around us, we are not preaching Christ. We are not being faithful to Christ. Just because you talk about Jesus and the cross and, and how sweet He is and all these things, that doesn't mean you're preaching Christ. Just preaching Christ includes
telling a person, if you're going to preach Christ, you're going to have to preach His commands about how to be saved. And His commands are clear. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. If you're going to preach Jesus, you're going to preach His commands about baptism and about how to be saved. If you're going to preach Jesus, you're going to preach about that one church that you can read about in Ephesians 4 and verse 4. The Bible says there's only one. And you're going to preach that. And you're going to be happy to preach it. You're going to be happy God gave you the privilege to preach it no matter who wants to hear it. If you're going to preach Christ, you're going to warn the brethren about false doctrine. So you see, just preaching Christ, there's a lot involved in that phrase. And obeying Christ, there's a lot more involved in that, than that phrase than just accepting and believing in Him. And you can obey Him now.